As time passes and the side-by-side -side segment continues to grow, so does the anticipation for long-standing manufacturers to enter the market. October 7th, at their dealer meeting in Palm Springs, Kawasaki gave the world its first up-close look at their all-new 2020 Terex KRX 1000. We were invited out to the dealer meeting to interact with the product development teams and drive the KRX for a few hours, which left us with nearly as many questions as answers. One week later, the time had come to put the KRX to a proper test, with two days of hard driving in the desert and rock trails of Moab, Utah. All right, so I'm, I'm at Texera. I'm here for UTV On Demand, and we're here to drive the 2020 TRX KRX 1000. Ed Texera, owner of Texera Tech Chassis Components, test drove Yamaha's seriously improved 2019 YXC1000R for us, which has won a couple of shootouts from other publications against Honda's new Talon models, making Ed an ideal test pilot for the KRX. This 2020 UTV On Demand test was made possible by Planet Side by Side makes upgrading your ride fast and affordable with their price match guarantee and free shipping on orders over $99. A leader in wheel and tire packages, they stock System 3, Maxxis, ITP, Fuel, Method Race wheels, and more. Planet Side by Side serves your off-road audio needs with brands like Wet Sounds, SSV Works, and Rockford Vosgate. For all your side by side needs with no interest financing available, visit PlanetSideBySide.com. Maxima side-by-side -side engine oil, an ester-based full synthetic oil blended with a unique balance of surface active, anti-wear, and extreme pressure additives to ensure smooth, trouble-free operation under extended periods of use. Lower operating temperatures increase horsepower and keep your engine running clean. With Maxima side-by-side -side synthetic oil, the only oil formulated specifically for your high-performance UTV. Powering the KRX is a brand new Kawasaki built naturally aspirated liquid cooled 999cc engine. The compact parallel twin cylinder design features four valves and double overhead cams per cylinder. A patent pending counterbalancing system further contributes to its compact dimensions. Bore and stroke numbers measure in at 92 by 75 millimeters with a compression ratio of 11.5 to 1. Air for the engine passes through a Donaldson paper filter located behind the driver's seat with tool-free access for easy maintenance. Fuel is drawn from an industry-leading 10.6-gallon fuel tank fed by fuel injection via 50mm throttle bodies. Kawasaki says the engine was tuned for high revving power and strong low RPM torque. They're claiming maximum torque of 76.7 foot-pounds at 7,000 RPMs and horsepower is listed at 112.6, according to the California Air Research Bureau. Standard and low power modes are selected by a dash-mounted switch. The low power setting is said to limit the engine to around three quarters total power, with the delivery smoothed out off the bottom to reduce unwanted pedal input. Kawasaki is the only Japanese manufacturer currently utilizing an automatic CVT transmission in their high-performance side-by-side. It features a centrifugal clutch to modulate power on takeoff, providing constant belt tension for reduced wear. A CVT temperature gauge on the cockpit's digital instrument display shows up to six bars. The temperature ranges between 104 and 230 degrees Fahrenheit. All six bars start blinking at 239 degrees, letting you know you'd better back off. We never managed to get our CVT transmission above two bars at 158 degrees and there were zero belt failures to report among our group, so we suspect that belt durability won't be of great concern for KRX owners. The transmission features high and low forward ranges plus neutral and reverse. Engine braking comes standard. In addition to mounting the pre-filtered intakes for the engine and CVT high on the rear fenders to minimize dust and water intrusion, an easily removable drain plug was mounted to the bottom of the CVT cover. A sight window on the opposite side of the engine is used to check oil level instead of a dipstick. Kawasaki also worked to make the oil fill, oil filter, and CVT easily accessible. The KRX axles and CV joints look pretty massive, 
with a drivetrain offering on-the-fly selectable two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive with front differential lock. Power is strong off the bottom, pulling hard on takeoff and out of low-speed corners. It also makes things easier when crawling up steep inclines. Going through the whoops and, and the sandy stuff, you feel the surge off the bottom really well. It, it flattens out a little in the, in the mid-range and, and then it pulls really hard on top again. Just as you begin to feel that the engine is a bit underwhelming, it wakes back up, building RPMs more quickly with a surge of top-end power. We had the KRX up around 66 miles per hour, running out of room before we ran out of power. We have heard that the top speed is restricted to around 68 miles per hour, which the aftermarket will undoubtedly bypass. With a rather robust looking build and massive 31 inch Maxxis carnivore tires mounted on 15 inch beadlock wheels, the KRX engine is pushing around more weight than its competitors, making it more of an endurance machine than a drag racer in stock trim. In low power mode and low range, acceleration is very gradual up to 2 miles per hour, remaining very mellow from there. In low power mode and high range, acceleration is extremely gradual up to 6 miles per hour. Low power modes seem to eliminate unwanted abrupt throttle inputs, and the increase in traction and reduction in unwanted slippage on steep rocky climbs is rather remarkable. In low range, engine braking makes the gas pedal an afterthought, unless you want to come to a complete stop. In high range, the engine braking was far more mellow, as we want for high-speed driving. With two-wheel drive for getting sideways, four-wheel drive eating grip everywhere, and front differential lock for times when you want every bit of available traction, we couldn't ask for a higher level of performance from the drivetrain. The KRX is built on a brand new tubular steel chassis. Utilizing an 8-point ROPS cage with all points tying in directly with the main frame for added strength and rigidity. The entire underside of the main frame is protected by a combination of plastic and steel skid plates, with steel plates helping guard the cabin's footwell area. Dual A-arm suspension is used up front, with a four-link trailing arm used out back. High clearance lower A-arms were used up front, with high clearance trailing arms and lower radius rods out back and was impressed with the overbuilt appearance of the chassis components compared to some of the other machines he's developed parts for. Fox Podium 2.5 LSC shocks with dual rate springs were used at both ends. Steel sleeves were added to the rear shocks to help protect the damping bodies. They feature spring preload, spring crossover, and 24-way low-speed compression damping adjustments, controlling 18.6 inches of wheel travel front and 21.1 inches of travel rear. That's 9 tenths of an inch more front travel and 1 inch more rear travel than the KRX's most similar competitor, the Honda Talon 1000R. Sway bars are found at both ends to help control body roll. Electronic power steering is tuned for greater assistance while stopped or at lower speeds, with a reduction in assistance at higher speeds where steering is lighter. It's also drive mode sensitive with separate maps for two- and four-wheel drive. The KRX comes set up with the same sizable 31-10-15 Maxxis Carnivore tires, mounted on equal offset 15-inch aluminum beadlock wheels at all four corners, allowing you to swap wheels front and rear in the event of a flat. The tires protrude at both ends, providing 90 degrees of approach and departure angle. The KRX is a claimed 68.1 inches wide with a 98.8 inch wheelbase and 14.4 inches of ground clearance. This puts it in the same width range as the Honda Talon 1000R, but with a 6.1 inch longer wheelbase and 1.4 inches more ground clearance. Surprisingly, Kawasaki is claiming a 19.4 foot turning radius compared to 21.3 feet for the Talon R. At 75 inches, the KRX is claimed to be a half inch shorter in spite of its 3-inch taller tires and higher ground clearance. Curb weight is around the heaviest we've seen for a two-seat sport side-by-side -side at 1,896.3 pounds. However, that could mean that it's one of the most durable, and weight starts adding up quickly on the competition when you start adding parts to beef them up. If power-to-weight ratio is of great concern to you, there's already an aftermarket company working on a turbo kit. 
Chassis and suspension performance are a cut above the stock engine's power output. This allows skilled drivers to take full advantage of the available power, making the machine fun to drive hard. It also keeps novice drivers from getting in over their heads as easily. Out of the box, the KRX shocks do everything pretty well, striking a balance between bump absorption and bottoming resistance. We framed out on a couple of mildly rutted high-speed G-outs, but never felt a bottoming sensation from the shocks. The suspension felt like it soaked everything up really well. Uh, the chassis felt solid. You don't hear a bunch of noise and a bunch of rattly loose stuff, so it felt really, really solid. Everything felt tight the whole way through. With its long wheelbase and well-tuned long-travel suspension, the KRX tracked straight and predictably in the high-speed whoops we encountered. Backing off the shock's compression damping takes more of the edge off sharp high-speed hits, although going too far will introduce body roll in corners. In the sandier whoops, I felt the, uh, the rear end was a little skatey, so I had uh, Kawasaki drop a couple of pounds in the rear tires. That fixed that problem. With the stock shock settings, the KRX has very little body roll, encouraging you to corner aggressively. Although the harder you corner, the more you notice a bit of front end push in loose terrain. Running limited slip four-wheel drive reduces this noticeably. Ed then backed from 12 to 16 clicks out on the front shock's compression damping, which allowed for a bit more weight transfer improving grip, yielding a KRX that can corner more aggressively with good predictability. For rock crawling on day two where high speed cornering wasn't much of a factor, Ed softened compression damping to 22 clicks out all the way around for improved compliance and small bump absorption, which worked well. Based on our limited shock tuning, we're pretty confident that with more time to adjust preload and crossover settings, we'll be able to extract even more plushness without affecting the machine's solid handling. Power steering is well balanced with light steering and minimal bump feedback, feeling natural and predictable at various speeds. Steering effort remained very consistent in the different drive modes, only stiffening up a bit near full steering lock with the front differential lock engaged. The big 31-inch Maxxis Carnivore tires do well at making small bumps disappear with their increased rollover. They delivered excellent traction in the rocks and worked well in the sandy desert, despite some low-speed chatter. Hydraulic disc brakes at all four corners slow the big cowie, with dual piston calipers up front and single piston calipers rear. Braking power and feel were both very good, easily overcoming the weight of the car and its burly wheel and tire setup. Braking balance is well dialed with both ends hooking up well. The KRX cockpit is very spacious, offering plenty of room to enter or exit. Half doors with handles inside and out, along with built-in armrests, feel well constructed. Both the driver and passenger benefit from automotive-style adjustable bucket seats with six inches of movement. Their nice covers look like they belong in some overpriced special edition model. In the seat, I slid back. I'm about 5'11", roughly, and I slid back uh, to what was comfortable, and then I wanted to see how much was left, and there's still at least another few inches that you could slide back. So I think a guy that's up to 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", would have no problem sitting in this thing and then the seat goes way forward if you're really short. The seats are pretty comfortable, but like most, a bit more bolstering would be nice for a high-performance machine. Three-point seat belts hold the driver and passenger in place, with no uncomfortable contact points that we've experienced. On technical climbs and descents, the sight line out of the front of the KRX is slightly inhibited by the higher points on the sides of the hood making us appreciate how easily we could sight the front tires out of the sides of the cabin. The sight line out of the back of the machine is pretty uninhibited. Ed felt that the kick up on the left side of the driver's floorboard was a bit too close in relationship to the gas and brake pedals. The gas and brake pedal are well within reach, but those with larger feet may wish for a bit more room between them. The ergonomically comfortable steering wheel is tilt adjustable the digital instrument display is mounted to the steering column, changing its angle with the steering wheel. It displays 23 different readouts. 
power is available from a 12-volt outlet. The adjustable T-shaped passenger grab bars adjustment is located inside the passenger glove box, keeping it away from mud and grime. Multiple glove boxes are located in the dash, along with a large box and additional storage located behind the seats. There are five cup holders located throughout the cabin. Unfortunately, a roof doesn't come standard. The cargo bed's 351 pound capacity is the highest we've seen listed for a sport side-by-side. -side. It offered plenty of room for a 31-inch spare tire. Its recessed bottom and integrated tie-down hooks make securing your cargo easier. LED lights are used at all four corners. The front end features high and low beams with LED position lamps, adding to the car's aggressive look. Kawasaki had over 50 different accessories available at the time of launch. Instead of offering a bunch of different models for specific uses, they're offering different accessory packages, which can be pre-installed by your dealer. We could see adding more horsepower to the KRX for racing, climbing steep dunes, or just upping the thrill factor another notch. The chassis and suspension certainly feel capable of dealing with it. If appearance and its short track record hold true, the KRX could be one of the toughest sports side-by-sides on the market, a capable weekend warrior, and a great candidate for building a race machine. The KRX delivers strongly when it comes to handling, suspension, terrain ability, comfort, and attention to detail. The tire and wheel package is a $1,500 to $2,000 upgrade for many, and it's hard to put a value on having the transmission, clutching, drive components, and bodywork all built around the demands of the taller tires. A CVT makes the KRX inviting for drivers of all skill levels. Front differential lock, the low power mode, and all of the before mentioned attributes make the KRX a terrain conquering beast. Comparably, the 2020 Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 offers a lot of features, performance, and potential for its $20,499 price tag and is a machine that we feel many enthusiasts should be seriously considering. For more information on the 2020 Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 and their full line of side-by-sides, visit Kawasaki.com. Subscribe to UTV On Demand so you can catch our latest side-by-side -side tests, project builds, and product reviews as they become available. For more content like this, make sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.